So we are back. My name is Ross Bolin, and I'm here with Jared Borislow, my loving, furry, and generally unkempt co-host. Jared, how's your ass? My ass is good. It's been uh, sitting in this seat for 45 minutes now. Yeah. Took me a minute to get here. There were issues. Yeah. The house alarm went off while I was in an Uber that then had to turn around. And then I had to get another Uber. It's this whole story. It doesn't matter. You didn't ask, but my ass hurts. I worked out legs yesterday for the first time in over a month. Ross Fit, admittedly, fell apart in March. Life always finds a way to derail the routine, but we're back on track, and by we I mean me, and by back on track, I mean I can't feel my legs and pooped blood this morning from doing three sets of ten squats with relatively light weight yesterday. Look, everyone knows I have chicken legs, okay? I'm the chicken leg guy. Ha ha. Look at his legs. They're so skinny like a stork. Look at the flamingo man, mommy. Daddy, how do his knees work? Tree trunk leg having obese kids judging a grown man's legs. It's preposterous. But this is the cycle I have to endure. Every winter, I work my ass off to get in great shape. Then by the time spring comes around, life has beaten the shit out of me to the degree that I lose my routine entirely. And by the time I can actually be out in the sun wearing anything that might even hint that I give a shit about working out. I'm a pasty, chicken-legged, regular, LARP-looking white dude again, and that's the cycle. That's my life. Yeah, I like how you said LARP uh, instead of NARP. That was funny to me. LARP. LARP is live-action role-play. Yeah. Are you role-playing a chicken? Yeah, I'm a LARPer. <laughs> you, you meant NARP, which is non-athletic regular person, right? No, I meant LARP. No, you did or... not mean LARP. I'm a LARPer. Speaking of which, I found a new thing I cannot handle... Without extreme awkwardness. Purchasing ammo or weapons or anything related to guns at all. It's just another place I cannot operate without getting my ass handed to me. It's the gun world. Like the car mechanic, and I've discussed this before. Back before I bought a futuristic self-driving luxury robot car from Tesla, I would go in and be like, Sup, I need an oil change. And they'd try to sell me like the wiper change and the fluid check and every other fucking thing. And I'd act like I knew what they were saying. Like, we pretend we know what the mechanic or oil change people are saying, even when we don't have a clue. And it's this awkward, horrible encounter every time where, like, they know they're trying to get me to buy stuff I don't need. I know that they're trying to get me to buy stuff I don't need, but I don't have the confidence to just walk away or say, shut the fuck up and give me my oil change or shut the fuck up, change out the brake pads or whatever. I don't know anything. A similar situation is when you go into the smoke shop and you try to be like, I can't say anything related to drugs. Hello, I'd like to buy a a, a grinder with a pollen catcher for my oregano, and I'd like a pipe for cloves, to smoke cloves. I smoke cloves. I'm a big clove smoker. Yes. I put them in my pipe. What about, Can I get a water pipe for my tobacco? Imagine somebody taking a full bong rip of tobacco. <laughs> who, who the fuck would do that? George Washington didn't do that. There was a dude who took a bong rip of like the Carolina Reaper, the spiciest pepper in the world, and that to me is more normal than taking a bong rip of tobacco. Yeah, it's just like pure cancer straight to the brain. <laughs> like, why would you do that? How much your body can't process that much nicotine? There's no way. <laughs> no. There's absolutely no way. I, I wonder how many people have done that. How many people have taken a bong rip of... T- it has to be sub a thousand people. A gra- What about a two liter Coca-Cola gravity bong of tobacco? Never happened. You don't think so? I Probably some frat guy jackass for a bet at some point trying to get laid by one of his brothers. <laughs> anyway, so I don't know shit about guns, right? Don't know shit about cars. It, it just, like I don't know anything about car engines. I always feel like I'm in defensive mode or being mocked secretly by all the mechanics out in the docking bay or whatever they call it. Yeah, it's like a Impractical Jokers. Like Your mechanic's got an earpiece in. There's all the other mechanics in the back being like, how are we going to fuck with this guy today? Ask him if he needs his, his uh, astral projector fixed. Yeah, but that seriously is what it is. He's in there jacking with me. Then he goes into the bay, the docking bay, where they're all docking all day. And he tells his buddies, like, how stupid I am and how little I know about cars. And then that's their enjoyment for the next 45 minutes or so. That's what it's like. It's like when you're getting the pedicure or the manicure and you know they're all talking about you and making fun of you. You don't know what they're saying, but you know it's happening. It's just like that. So the new situation where my total ignorance leads to torturous awkwardness is anything involving firearms, guns, ammo, weapons of any kind. 
growing up in Texas and living here my whole life, it's not like a lack of familiarity with guns. Just like I'm not lacking in familiarity with cars, right? I've driven one since I was 16, but I still know nothing about them. So it's not like I'm scared of guns or don't know how to shoot them. I'd just prefer not to if I didn't have to. I'm not a hunting guy. I have no desire to shoot Bambi. I don't give a shit. The only Actually, animal I've ever killed with a gun is a rabbit. Now, you, didn't you tell me the other day you're a MILF hunter? <laughs> it's a totally different type of hunting. <laughs> totally different type. Oh, okay. But I did say that. Um, not a gun guy. MILF hunter, sure. Animal hunter, no. People hunter, certainly not. I just don't like guns. You know? It's not my thing. That's not my bag, baby. It's not my bag, baby. But I've got this Belgium-made Browning 12-gauge from my former father-in-law. It's automatic and awesome and terrifying. And it's out of ammo. Not going to say why, but I needed to buy some. And I thought, shit, I've, I've never bought ammo before. And ammo was like a really weird thing to purchase, right? Like, so what do I do here? You walk into Academy and go, hey, I need some bullets for my gun. I've never shot a gun. So, like, what a country! You've never shot a gun at uh, all. I shot. So, what I did shoot was a air rifle, and I went full Call of Duty and put my eyeball up to the scope, like they do in Call of Duty. You know, uh-huh. where the whole the whole field of view is the scope. And then I shot it, and I got a black eye because the scope launched into my eyeball. It wasn't great, and I was bleeding. So Jared's not helpful to me. No, I don't. Oh, you, was this about you asking me? Because I have no idea. No, but I'm saying like. I, we're in the same boat here. Yeah. Do you know anything about cars? Uh, like, if you're driving and suddenly a car, your engine is making a strange noise, do you go, ah, uh, yes, that's the carburetor? Uh, no, I, I know the belt uh, because sometimes I make my girlfriend just take it out of the car and spank me with it. But, there's a belt in there somewhere. Yeah, the, there's a belt. Yeah, there's a belt. <laughs> Mine broke and I just replaced it with a, you know, a belt from my closet, leather one. It was cracking a little bit, so I was like, yeah. So you don't know shit about cars either? No, but you have a Tesla and I... No, for sure, you don't know shit about your Tesla. It's still a Tesla. But there is one thing you know about your Tesla, a Tesla now. It's a Tesla. You know one thing about your, your Tesla now, what you can say to it. Yeah, I can say a couple different things. One, open your butthole. The charging flap opens up if you say that to the car. Two, my balls are cold. The seat warmer turns on. So at least two things I can say to my Tesla that I can't say to you. Thank you, Elon. Yeah. Anyway, I just don't just like conceptually walking into a store... Especially like, you know, in America where there's a mass shooting every other day and going, hey, I'd like some bullets for my weapon to fire it. Like, it feels like they should at least have to ask you, what for? <laughs> <laughs> like, legally, like, okay, fill out this, uh, fill out this yeah, form. Yeah, just tell it's, us what, you, what yeah. you're intending on doing with these bullets. And there's like different types of bullets and all these brands and boxes and shit. And it's like, look, bro, I'm just trying to protect myself, like protect the homestead with a little firepower. Can you just give me some boom boom shells that will make the bad men go away? And they try to make you feel like such a dumbass too, using all the fancy technical industry words you don't know at all. Ah, uh, these bullets here. Ah, uh, yeah, the old 16 carbon fiber action imploding hollow point rounds specifically used for turkey hunting in Indonesia. Yep, these are the rounds you need for your 12 gauge shotgun, you stupid LARP. <laughs> Yeah, it's it seems confusing. Yeah, it's like, hey, Bob, come get a load of this kid. He's driving a Tesla and asking if we can change his oil. That's me at the mechanic. <laughs> they they walk in and just like take a the McDonald's they were drinking for lunch and just like pour it on your engine or like there yeah. you go. Yep, that'll be four hundred and twenty six dollars. <laughs> you stupid fuck. And it's like, you know what, gun and car dudes, just fucking tell me what I need to know. And when push comes to shove and the shoe is on the other foot and you need to know like how to make a podcast or order food online, I'll return the favor. Like, quit giving a shit. A big time, a big, uh, like, area where this happens a lot is when there's a new trendy restaurant that opens up, and you walk in, and you get to the counter, and they go, hey, welcome to, insert place here, and you go, okay. Fabrizio's. Yeah. You, you look at the menu and go, oh, this isn't like a normal menu. There's, like, different sections, and there's different things, and I've never heard of what that thing is. Do I want it, though? And then you get to ask them, and they're like, you're like what's your favorite? But then you're just trusting that you're going to have the same favorite as just the person who works there and they don't know because it just opened maybe they haven't even had the food but a couple times chef's probably working on the menu still and if you notice 85 percent of the time you ask the the server or like the cashier what their favorite menu item is it's the most expensive one yeah because they're not idiots and they think you are hey welcome to uh, longhorn steakhouse uh hey thanks i've never been here before what's good yeah the 45 ounce uh the 45 ounce for two. vince young steak special <laughs> yeah with truffle butter Crab on top, 
and uh, a, a, a seafood tower is placed. We just stick it down into the steak. <laughs> you have to eat the entire tower before you can even get to the steak. Actually. Or you have That's to pay cool. five times as much money. It's a special. Uh, it's a challenge we're doing right now. Yeah, my favorite thing with uh, with servers is when you ask about something on the menu and they act like you should know. It's like same thing. Like, why the fuck would I know this? It's your job. Why the fuck would I know about the gun? You are the bullet salesman here. Just help me know what I need to know, and we can both move on with our day. What is this power play? You feel big? You feel like a big man? Because you, you know where the box of bullets is? Because you know what the fuck Crab Rangoon is and I don't? I love Crab Rangoon. I just had a Crab Rangoon pizza last night from Via 313. Look, I know what it is, but I also still don't know what it is. Like, I order it and eat it, and it's delicious, but like when I finish it, I don't know what that was. Like, it wasn't a crab. So it's- What the hell's a Rangoon? It depends on how fancy of a place you're at. Most like is it fried Rango, <laughs> the the lizard, voiced by Johnny Depp. It's not. Yes. Uh, so it's either imitation crab or real crab, depending on how fancy of a joint you're at. What the hell is imitation crab? Pollock. Is it another fish imitating a crab? It's Pollock. What is Pollock? It's a fish. It's a, it's a trash fish. So you're telling me they took another fish, another sea creature that's just tastes similar to crab, and they were like, you know what? Fuck it. There's way more of this one. It's easier to get. It's cheaper. Let's just call it imitation crab, though. Yeah, so they take it, they cut it up, they, they like, put it through a screen mesh into these little tubes, then they color the outside red like a crab, then they stick it in your in sushi. In an improv class, and they go, act like a crab. Yeah. <laughs> it's there for about eight weeks till it graduates, and then it uh, is in your California roll, which is kind of funny that a California <laughs> roll is fake, right? It's very California of it. Yeah, I feel like we can't even make fun of California anymore. We're California light. Austin is definitely California light, but we're like we're like the chill Californians, not the fake ones, right? No, we're f- we've been flooded with the exact thing you're describing. They all moved here. Yeah, we've got Elon and Joe. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Anyway, Jared, you wouldn't believe it, but there's a lot going on in the world that doesn't revolve around me. Oh, damn. And we're going to discuss and make fun fun of some of those uh, happenings today, and find ways to make them about me. Oh. That's good. Are you ready for our first segment? Yes. Business first. Jerry, do you like hashtag sports? Uh, I've been known to indulge. This episode of RBP is brought to you by MyBookie, our sports betting sponsor. It's a great website, mybookie.ag. If you happen to miss the first pitch or tip off in the basketball game or whatever, it doesn't matter. They've got live betting, so you can still get in on the action. All the prop bets your heart could possibly imagine, whether it's betting on individual player scores or what, how many strikeouts you're favorite pitcher will get or whatever they've got all the prop bets you could possibly need and if you don't like sports like jared and i do if you're not into hashtag sports maybe it's hashtag entertainment or hashtag politics you wish to wager on well you can do that on mybookie.ag too they've got everything that you could possibly want to bet on there sign up today at mybookie.ag use the promo code rbp to secure your first deposit bonus up to a thousand dollars stipulations apply that means when you put in like let's say 50 bucks to play some bets, Jared. If you use the code RBP, you're going to get a deposit bonus that's going to give you even more money, and again, stipulations apply. So go to uh, mybookie.ag today, use the code RBP, sign up for that deposit bonus, support the show, get all the sports betting you need in your life at the same time, and hopefully you get rich while I get rich, and that's the win-win-win for everybody. Let's fucking go. Mybookie.ag, code RBP, get in there. If you're betting on sports and you're not doing it with mybookie.ag, you're spitting in my face and on Jared's feet every time you wager. Next segment. Worst tattoos in history. Today I want to take a moment to recognize some of the worst tattoos in history. Thanks to Elon Musk's lovely wife, Grimes. You can't say lovely wife Grimes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of an oxymoron. For the unaware, Grimes is a musician, singer, songwriter, record producer, music video director, and visual artist. Which feels like too many titles, but whatever. Whatever. I kind of redid my bio the other day, Jared. I don't know if you noticed this, my bio on social media to to be a little more professional um, because I'm a 33-year-old man and it probably should be more than just like an inside joke that I find to be funny. So, you know, when people click on my page so that they know who I am and what I do. Um, And I was thinking through like what I should put on that list in my bio. And, you know, like reading through Grimes, it's like, look, I could make mine sound that tight if I wanted to, but it'd be be like, there'd be like, you know, some half-truths in there. Yours sounds kind of tight, though. New York Times bestselling author. Well, I know it sounds kind of tight, but, like, technically, didn't we, like, both executive produce a movie at some point? Like, the company we worked at executive produced a movie. Are we executive producers? I'm just going to put executive producer in my bio. I wrote a cookbook, my last company. 
I'm a cookbook author. Oh, see? Oh my this is god. This exactly what I'm saying. We can spice up our shit if we want to go grimes with it. Ross, I don't know how I haven't talked about this in the show yet. What's that? I am quoted in Fox Business nationwide article, millions of impressions on this article. Yeah. As a food trend expert. Why do you not have that in your bio? I don't understand. Because I'm a goddamn idiot. Grimes would have it in her bio, and she is not an idiot. I have, but, I have millions of impressions on that article. I got I to gotta put that in right now. See? Food trend expert. I am a food trend expert. You know Ask how many me about people, a food trend. Do you know, know how many people are thinking through their professional resume right now? Like, oh my God, how many things could I add if I went full Grimes? And, and that's the question you should be asking. But you should not go full Grimes because going full Grimes would be getting a uh, uh, your back tattooed, like your whole back, like a back piece, as these ink people call it, of, and I'm quoting here, beautiful alien scars, end quote. Now... If you haven't seen a photo of her back yet, um, you're going to want to use the Google machine and just put Grimes Tattoo. It's going to pop up in Google Images all over the place, and then you'll know exactly what we're dealing with here. Jared, have you seen the images? Yeah, it looks exactly like a beautiful version of she had sex, and whoever she was having sex with scratched her back up, but they did it in a very intricate way. That's one man's opinion. Um it it looks like a lot of different things. It looks like it looks it lo- doesn't look beautiful to me. I can appreciate that you think it's beautiful. Alien scars though. Well, the scars remind us the past is real. But tear my back open just to feel. Papa Roach, I think. Is that Papa Roach? But alien scars. Yeah. Was that Papa Roach? Scars? What's wrong with you? Isn't it? <sighs> Signs? You seen the movie Signs? That one's about aliens. Why would you get alien scars tattooed on your back is the question I'm I don't asking. know. Like, okay, even if you super believe in aliens. Jared, do you believe in aliens? Um, I mean, I believe that aliens exist in the universe. I'm not convinced that they've been to Earth yet or that we've interacted with them, but I do believe that there are extraterrestrial beings in the universe. So you have to assume that, like, based on the tat, Grimes believes not only that aliens exist, that, that but... But that perhaps she's interacted with one in some way, shape, or form, or that perhaps she's been um, not possessed. What's it called when you're when you're taken by the aliens? Oh, uh, abducted. Abducted by the aliens, or like, or maybe she thinks they're, you know, gonna come down yeah. and take her now that she's got this beautiful alien scar. Why scar? Uh, here's my question: If you really like, why not a beautiful alien language or like just a beautiful alien? Period. Why the beautiful alien scars? Is it, like, meant to represent, like, is she aware of an alien history in which one alien race was enslaved and, like, they endured whippings and then they had scars and then she needed to commemorate that by getting alien scars on her back? There's just so many questions. Yeah, is it, is, does it have to do with the movie Alien? And what is the conversation between these two people like? Like, you've, you've, you've watched Elon talk. Yeah. On yeah. Joe Rogan. Yes. Yes, I've seen him talk. Yeah, it's pretty robotic, uh, you know. He's I've seen him smoke weed. I'm psycho genius person. He smoked a blunt with Joe Rogan that became one of the biggest memes on the internet. And now we know what Grimes is into. Before I thought maybe just, you know, facial piercings and chains and and uh, singing, songwriting, record producing, music video directing, and visual artistic creation. But now also beautiful alien scars. Like what the hell do these two people talk about? I, I don't know. They they seem to be insane, so they probably, they could talk about whatever that entails. Just just insanity. Yeah, just like blah, 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 blah. that. That seems like it might actually be how they communicate with each other around the house, though. But it's <laughs> but it's performance art. <laughs> yes, I haven't spoken to my wife in three years. We only communicate in tongues. <laughs> in tongues. <laughs> That's actually. You know the baby's name was like A E X twelve. That's actually how you pronounce it. It's. I have a question for you. Yep. What do you think happens when aliens abduct you and they you go up the beam of light mm-hmm. into their spacecraft, and then what do they do to you in there? Well, as movies and television have taught me, they strap you down to a medical table situation, and then they do horrible things to you, um, tests, prodding, but they almost always leave you with some kind of tracking device and or strange thing, usually behind the ear. Or uh, if you're Cartman from South Park, up your ass. Yeah, do they like, it seems to be, the idea is this. Everybody says, you get abducted by aliens and you get probed. Everybody does say this. Is probing just like they milk your prostate? What's, what's, what is this? Well, in South Park, it's a giant satellite that eventually comes out of Cartman's ass. And that's my scientific reference point for alien abductions. So, yeah. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> 
Other bad tattoos, Jared. Uh, Charles Manson had a swastika tattooed on his forehead in prison. It's not great. Not a good look. Not a good look. Risky. A lot of people called that a fashion risk <laughs> <laughs> that didn't pay off. Uh, my baseball, high school baseball teammate, Michael, he showed up one day to the locker room and he took his shirt off to get dressed into his jersey and his whole shoulder was wrapped in plastic. And we were like, hey, Mike, what's going on with your shoulder? And he was like, oh, I got a, I got a tattoo. He turned 18 like the week before. And we were like, oh, cool. Well, can you take off the plastic and show us? And Jared, he did. And when he took off the plastic on Mike's right shoulder on his back was about a six inch tall Grim Reaper fucking pitchfork and all, not pitchfork, whatever that thing is, scythe. Scythe, yeah. Scythe. And, uh, and, uh, and in the other hand, it just fucking <laughs> <laughs> flicking off the world, middle finger to the sky, bone finger and all, and, and it very detailed. And, and it was just, just a decision that you have to think at this point, Mike has questioned. I mean, as a guy named J Bone, I support any bone related tattoos. Okay. I have one I have one myself. What? Yeah. I got I have a bone tattoo on my piece. <laughs> Just a bone down oh, your I bone. Call, yeah, it's J Bone. You know who has really bad tattoos like as a group of people? NBA players. Yeah. It's like a requirement. You have to have at least one tattoo that could be on this worst tattoos list if you're gonna be in the NBA. It's like an astonishing amount of terrible tattoos in the NBA. Derrick Rose, angry basketball on his shoulder. Do you remember that? Yeah. I mean, like, it looks like a prison tattoo, but Derrick hasn't been to prison. Therefore, I have to question what happened. Conor McGregor's chest tattoo, I think, is definitely up there. It's iconic now, and I think maybe if Conor McGregor was a different person, it would be one of the worst tattoos. He has made... The worst tattoo maybe of all time into an iconic, amazing tattoo. What is it? It's like a gorilla in the forest going crazy. Oh, this, yeah, this is a ridiculous chess piece. But, like, UFC people don't count. Yeah, you're right. Because that's part of it. That's, like, the thing, yeah. It's like saying a wrestler yeah. has something bad. It's like it's the bit, kind of. Yeah, the NBA guys, though, some of it's it's just absurd. Richard Jefferson, uh, for those of you who remember Richard Jefferson. He has tattoos? No, no hair, but but a tattoo on his shoulder that just says RJ, because you know those are his initials. But again, like it's like he let his six year old do it. It doesn't look good at all. Like a blind seven year old girl did the tattoo on his shoulder. Kenyon Martin had lips on his neck. Kevin Durant actually had a giant like Bible verse done on him, giant scroll like beautiful letters, and then they spelled a word wrong. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of AJ McCarron. <laughs> What? Look up AJ McCarron oh, tattoo. Oh yeah, that's well, one on, of the worst. On Kevin, it was uh, the word mature was spelled M A U T R E, Maltre, which is not close. So he got that touched <laughs> up. Which Look, is the thing about tattoos? Yeah. They're like, they're still fairly permanent. Like to get one taken away with the lasering is a huge pain in the ass. Sometimes, literally, if your tattoos on in your ass, it, it it takes forever. You have to go back over and over and over and over again. We had a buddy who got a tattoo removed. Um, Didn't you get a tattoo removed? No, which is like the thing. I can't really talk because of my wedding ring tattoo. It's like the most ironic and iconic tattoo in history. And for those of you who haven't heard the story, after I got married, at some point, I was in San Marcos, Texas, and I was blackout drunk. And 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 the irony of it is is beautiful. Like I was too drunk for the ink to stick. I was basically bleeding out. I paid twice as much as I should have. It faded fast and left me with a stupid scar. So I don't know what I'm doing making fun of anybody else's tattoos. Yeah, that's that's an all-time bad tattoo. It's not great. 200 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look up Did you look up AJ McCarron's tattoo? No. Oh, look it up right now. I think this could be This is like famous for being unbelievably terrible. And I need you to describe it to the people. Oh, his chess piece, this thing. I vaguely remember him being uh, roasted for this, but it was a long time ago, like 2012. There's also a NFL player who's still in the league who has a tattoo of uh, a woman giving him a blowjob. I saw that. Yeah. Also, not great art. It wasn't great, but like the again, tat- like it's these iconic. Are very wealthy men. I don't understand why they don't hire a, an actually good artist. It's iconic, though. I think it doesn't matter how bad it is. Once it becomes an iconic tattoo, that's part of the bit is how bad it is, right? Okay. Here's the thing. AJ McCarron's idiotic tattoo has been reported on so much that I can't actually find the original shitty tattoo that started this whole mess. So whatever it was, it was bad. 
I think it was like a bad Jesus. A bad Jesus. Yeah. Like, you know, bad Santa. It's not the Jesus you want. You want good Jesus if you're going to go with Jesus. Yep. Can I get bad Jesus on my chest, please? A lot of bad tattoos out there, Jared. Glad you don't have one. Good for you. I have the half. Yeah. One half of a bad tattoo. But nobody's touching Grimes. Holy hell. Beautiful alien scars. It's in white ink, too. <sighs> Unsettling. It's the last word I will use to describe the Grimes back tattoo, and then we will move on. This episode of RBP is brought to you by Sunday. Spring is just around the corner, and that means it's time to get your lawn on track, and I don't know anything about lawn care. If I was set out to just do it myself with absolutely no one to help, I'd be screwed, and that's where Sunday comes in. Sunday is not just another lawn care product. It's a customized lawn plan that works with nature. It's awesome. They take out all of the guesswork and unwanted chemicals so you can grow a beautiful lawn that's better for people, pets, and the planet. <coughs> all you have to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is go to their website, getsunday.com slash Ross. You're going to put in your address. Uh, their, their free lawn analysis tool is going to take care of the rest in just a matter of seconds. They use soil and climate data to create a tailored nutrient plan so you get all the stuff your lawn needs and nothing it doesn't. Sunday is made with ingredients that you can actually pronounce like seaweed, iron, and molasses so you can grow and grow better and feel better about it. Makes taking care of your lawn easier than ever. Get the guesswork out of it. Super easy. You hook it right up to your hose, you walk around for 10 minutes, cover the whole lawn in the Sunday product, you get a box that has easy instructions to follow. My lawn already looks a ton better than it did two weeks ago when I did my first spray. I didn't know that irons needed, wait, irons, lawns, Needed iron. Mm. Did you know that? We all need iron, Jared. We do. We all do. Ross is chewing on ice chips every single day because he's so anemic. It's true. So Ross's lawn is no longer anemic because he sprayed the iron booster on it. The Sunday iron booster. Let Sunday take the guesswork out of growing a greener, more beautiful lawn this spring. Visit GetSunday.com slash Ross today and get $20 off your custom lawn plan at checkout. It's awesome. Like I said, you put in your address. You'll see their freaking imaging of your front and backyard if you have both. And, uh... You get to find out exactly what you need for your lawn, and then it comes your way. That's $20 off your custom lawn plan when you go to GetSunday.com slash Ross today. Shows up to your doorstep, and you're on the way to a greener, happier, better lawn. Just like that. Next segment. What is a Ponzi scheme? Jared, Bernie Madoff, the architect of the largest Ponzi scheme in history, has died. Mm -hmm. I hate the labels they have for this dude. Architect? Makes him sound like he's a genius. Son, he lied to people and stole their money. Like, yeah. be real. This was not like a complicated. Well, he was. Uh, he was very, very, very smart. First off, he was like the chairman of Nasdaq at one point, right? Which is why people trusted him when he went and did his own private investment securities firm. Exactly. They had no reason not to. If there was anybody you were going to trust with your money, it was this guy. It would be like Ben Bernanke, who was like the what, head of the Treasury, being like, "Hey, I'm going to invest money now." You're like, "Oh, that's a guy who he knows everything about money. Like, why would I not? Why trust would this I not guy? trust him?" He was once in charge of the stock exchange or whatever. Yeah. Do you know what a Ponzi scheme is, Jared? I want to uh, hear your layman's lame explanation before I go into the New York Times, as is my right as a New York Times bestselling author. Yeah, so a Ponzu scheme is, so is Ponzu is a mixture of soy sauce uh -huh. and uh, yuzu, which is a Japanese citrus. Right. And so you mix them together. It's a nice citrusy soy sauce, very delicious, delicious. on a number of Japanese dishes. Okay, great. Uh, so I'll give you my explanation. I think a Ponzi scheme is where oh, I go like, Jared... You say Ponzi scheme? Yeah, Ponzi scheme. Okay. Ponzi okay, scheme. Yeah, it's go. okay. It's okay. Uh, I say, Jared, give me some of your money, and I'll invest it, and I'm going to make it into more money. And you go, okay. And then I lie to you, and I just take the money and tell you, dude, that money you gave me, it's like 20 times that already. You should totally give me more money. And then you're thinking you're rich and convincing your friends and family, and then they're getting in on it, and then on and on and on it goes, right? There is another layer to that. That you missed. What's the other layer? So in the beginning, you'll put in... God created the heavens and the earth? <laughs> yes. In the beginning, you'll put in like $10,000, right? Right. Not only do I say, oh my God, you made so much money. I now I it's $100,000. I provide you with those returns and you can pull them out, but I go, hey. But only at the beginning. Yeah, only at the so beginning. So the first yes. people, you, you could pull them out and you go, hey. What? Yeah. And you go, hey, I here's all this money I've made you. You can take it out or you can reinvest and I'll make you 10x more. And that money that he's providing you with that you can take out is the money that other people just put in. Yes. So it's this constant feeding of exactly. the lie to keep it going and get more people in. So like, let's go to the New York Times. 
His enormous fraud left behind a devastating human toll and paper losses totaling $64.8 billion, with a B. Bernard L. Madoff, the one-time senior statesman of Wall Street who in 2008 became the human face of an era of financial misdeeds and missteps for running the largest and possibly most devastating Ponzi scheme in financial history, died on Wednesday at the Federal Medical Center in Butner, North Carolina. He was 82 years old. Butner? I hardly know her. The Federal Bureau of Prisons confirmed his death. Uh, He was serving a 150-year prison sentence. He had asked for early release in February of 2020, saying in a court filing that he had less than 18 months to live after entering the final stages of kidney disease and that he had been admitted to uh, palliative... What is this? Palliative... Palliative... I don't know what that means. His enormous fraud began with friends, relatives, country club acquaintances in Manhattan, people that had absolutely no reason not to uh, suspect him, right? It was a population that shared his professed interest in Jewish philanthropy, but ultimately grew to encompass major charities like Hadassah, universities like uh, Brandeis and Yeshiva, institutional investors, wealthy families in Europe, Latin America and Asia. I mean, he pulled people in from all over the place. There's like random Hollywood A-list celebrities like Kevin Bacon, who lost everything in the Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme. It's bonkers how wide reaching it was. Um... Back to the New York Times, the victims of this fraud, some of whom went overnight from comfortable wealth to frantic desperation, numbered in the thousands and were scattered from Palm Beach, Florida to the Persian Gulf. The paper losses totaled $64.8 billion, including the fictional profits he had, has credited to customers' accounts over at least two decades. And that's one of the really crazy things about this story and about this scheme is how long he was able to keep it going because it becomes incredibly complicated and that lie that you've weaved that web, yeah, it's just, I mean, I can't imagine. Uh, I've watched a documentary on this. I believe it was on HBO. That was not a documentary. It was a biopic starring Robert De Niro. Was it? Yes. You, do you think they had a cameraman in Bernie Madoff's home just filming him with his No, wife? I'm saying I don't know if I watched <laughs> the thing you're referencing. The one on HBO was a biopic with Robert De Niro. I, I think I watched a documentary, okay. though. I don't know if I watched a biopic. The Wizard of Lies. Yeah, I didn't watch that. I watched a documentary, like with interviews yeah. with his family okay. and shit. The biopic's and... good. Good biopic. Oh, okay. Robert will... De Niro. He see, here's the thing. Bernie Madoff, really shitty guy. You kind of did him a solid by giving him Robert De Niro. It's one of the things about situations like this and what we do with people who do these 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 horrible crimes, including stuff like I referenced earlier, like mass shooters. It's like giving their name this credibility, but especially with white collar crimes, they tend to apply these titles like architect to shit where i'm like i don't think we should be giving them like compliments yeah here's my take every person who's a shitty person Uh should in a biopic about their life have to be played by gilbert gottfried yeah but then well uh, yeah hey give me your money okay that's not even it's gotta be (laughs) he's so harsh It's, it's fucking horrible like he's the worst his roasts, though. Yeah. Like, when the guy roasting you, just anything he says sounds so offensive. And he's squinting so much. And he, and yeah, just... He needs Felix Gray's. He does, clearly. Something is horribly wrong. FelixGrayGlasses.com slash RBP. Yeah, indeed. Um, more than money was lost, back to the New York Times, at least... At least two people in despair over their losses committed suicide. A major Madoff investor suffered a fatal heart attack after months of contentious litigation over his role in the scheme. Some investors lost their homes. Others lost the trust and friendship of relatives and friends they had inadvertently steered into harm's way. I mean, just what a terrible, terrible piece of crap, human. Good riddance. Like, I don't wish ill will or death upon any man, but if you do massive damage to many people and you die... I ain't gonna cry. What a shitty guy. Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities. Whew. This is why I put all of my money into patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast, Jared. It's the safest investment in the world. Yep. And the return on investment is laughing four extra times a month. It is. It's a great return on investment. At least a minimum of at least four extra laughs a month in your life. Hopefully multiple laughs per episode. Exactly. Four, we'll we'll guarantee a laugh an episode. That's a guarantee. guarantee one. That's it, though. One guaranteed laugh per episode on patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast. Anyway, Bernie Madoff's dead. 
I'm glad they didn't let him out of prison because he was terminally ill. That makes no sense to me at all. Do you remember when he was uh, making like a Ponzi scheme with hot cocoa packets in prison? That was like a new story from a year ago. Yeah, he couldn't stop. The guy couldn't stop the hustle. He got to prison and was like, well, fuck it. I'll just take these guys for everything they're worth. And it turns out everything they're worth is a bunch of hot cocoa packets. I got five Swiss Miss. How many cartons of cigs will that get me? (laughs) Jared, look, Jared, you give me your deodorant and your shaving razor. I give you two packs of cocoa powder. I'm going to come back in three weeks, and I'm going to bring you back the shaving razor with some shaving cream and a sleep mask. Take those two cocoa packets back, too, and shank you in the shower. (laughs) With the shaving razor. With the shaving razor. This episode of RBP is brought to you by Athletic Greens, the most comprehensive daily nutritional beverage I've ever tried. It's phenomenal. It's hard to remember to eat well, Jared. It's hard to remember what things you're supposed to eat and when and when to put them in your body and what. Yeah, sometimes Ross and I will uh, go a couple days and be like, oh, I don't think we've eaten a vegetable in like 48 hours. Thank God we now have Athletic Greens as a sponsor who gives us all the nutritional things we need in just one tasty scoop of Athletic Greens, which has 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients, including a multivitamin, multimineral, probiotic, green superfood, and more that all work together to fill the nutritional gaps in Jared and I's diets. They increase energy and focus, aid with digestion, support a healthy immune system, all very important things, right? Yeah, I got something for you, Ross. If Uh you're somebody who likes rituals and traditions and like likes adding little things into your daily life that will make you feel better and make you healthier. That should be everyone. It should be everyone. It should be everyone. It should be everyone. So here's what you do with Athletic Greens. This is literally what they tell you to do. Athletic Greens. You wake up in the morning on an empty stomach. You drink one bottle of Athletic Greens. That's literally it. Then you have all your vitamins and minerals you need. You feel a lot better. You put your scoop into the bottle for the rest of the day. Yeah, you put your scoop in the bottle, shake it up, drink it. And that's what you start the day off with. So it's going right into your bloodstream, right? You know, like it's you have an empty stomach. You're drinking and here's all the these best part of that. minerals. All these different people are taking like 16 different products to try to get all these different things like into their... No, no, that's what's great about Athletic Greens. It removes the need to take multiple products. That's one of the keys. You just go to athleticgreens.com slash Ross today. Join health experts, podcasters, athletes. j J-Bones and health conscious go-getters around the world who make a daily commitment to their health every single day. And you'll get a free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs today. Like we all Jared need vitamin said, D. We all need vitamin D right now. Great way to start the day. Yep. Again, you simply visit athleticgreens.com slash Ross. Free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs today. Get your athletic greens. Next segment. And now, Ross Boland's Animal of the Week. Been a minute. Have you ever done an animal of the week with me? Yeah, a long time ago. I did like a squirrel or some dumb shit. A squirrel? (laughs) Fucking squirrel. Well, I let you pick today. I let you pick what we were going to do today. And you picked the spotted sea hare, though, is what you went with. Yep. Which which is actually Aplesia dactylomella. What the hell is a spotted sea hare, Jared? And why'd you pick this? All right. Here's why I picked this. This is my favorite sea creature that I would deal with when I volunteered at the Clearwater Marine Aquarium, home of Winter the Dolphin, star of the movie Dolphin Tale. So here's the deal. In high school, I had to volunteer... That was a lot to absorb, so yeah, please explain. Yeah. In high school, I had to volunteer uh, to get these volunteer hours in because I was in the International Baccalaureate Program, which all of your listeners who did did IB will agree with me right now. Fuck IB. They agree. They know. Irritable bowel. No. No. Not Irritable Bowels, International Baccalaureate. It sucked. Hey, shoot me a DM if you were in IB so we can talk about how much we hate it together. Was this some kind of program that was supposed to make you look better for college or something? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And all it did was, oh, it it may have been a selling point on like your resume for college, but all it did was make you have less credits in college because they didn't accept, a lot of colleges wouldn't accept half your classes. Oh, so you were supposed to be earning college credit that then at a lot of colleges actually didn't accept the stupid uh-huh. IB classes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So essentially- Sounds like a good program. Yeah. Essentially, all of your classes- Florida. Florida education here. All your, This is international. It's the whole world. It's worldwide. I've never heard of it. Well, it is or everywhere. Uh, we probably didn't even allow it at H- <laughs> HISD, Houston Independent School District. So the sh- sh- Shining beacon of educational hope in America. Go ahead, Jared. Yes. Say it. Back to you, Jared. Thank you. So essentially, all of your classes were AP classes, but the way they were categorized, colleges wouldn't see half of them as AP classes. A lot of them wouldn't. Some would accept all. A lot didn't. My college didn't. It sucked. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. So you took the classes again? Uh, yes. Kind Basically. Of. Some of them, yes. Yeah. So I volunteered at this aquarium because getting volunteer hours in was part of the International Baccalaureate program. What were your other options for the volunteering? Oh, anything. 
but I want, I liked, I already had been volunteering at the aquarium. Uh, so I already had a rapport there and I could, I knew I could get into some cool programs. You had already been volunteering at the aquarium. Yes. I was what uh, a hero. You're the volunteer. Everybody get out and volunteer. I was a summer camp counselor. Okay. For uh, all the little, the little children learning about dolphins and shit. You were a summer camp counselor at the aquarium. So yeah. you already had a rapport there. Yes. So what I did for my volunteer hours, I was able to finagle becoming the essentially deckhand for the cruise that would be essentially, it was a tour of the bay, right? Okay. A tour of the intracoastal waterway where what we would do is you would go out on the boat. It would be me, the captain, and then the maybe another deckhand and then the woman who was uh, give, giving the tour, the tour guide. The winch, the tour winch. <laughs> the tour winch, I guess you could be a nautical term. So first thing you do is you leave, they talk about, give a history of like Clearwater, Florida. This is a you know, cool coastal city. Then we would drive by- Yeah, all everybody the- needs to know that, the history of Clearwater, Florida. Yep. Did you know why it's called Clearwater? Because there were natural springs, Ross. Well, that's fascinating, Jared. Then we would go by the shore and they'd point out all the rich people houses. Guess who some of the rich people were who we would drive by the boat by? Andre Agassi. No. That's, that would be sick. Um, I'll give you one you're never going to get. Philip Seymour Hoffman. I wish. The late, great Philip Seymour Hoffman. Al Roebling, who uh, designed the Brooklyn Bridge. Okay. Uh, Nigel Mansell, famous on. Formula One driver. So they were driving past like, here's Al Roebling's house. Mm-hmm. The they, Roebling estate. How many people went, who? <laughs> they would explain it. And they, also, isn't Al in there like, hey, fuck y'all. Like, does everybody need to know where Al lives? Well, like, don't, please, nobody ever drive past my house and, and on a tour and then like point to it and say it. Well, I mean, he died in like the early, mid 1900s, but. It's family, I'm sure, lives there, yes. Oh, it's the, like the estate of Al yes. Roebling. Yes, so Designer then, of the Brooklyn Bridge. Nigel Mansell, Formula One driver. Again, nobody knows who that is. Nope. Essentially, it was all built up for the last house on the row. Okay. The most famous person to ever come out of Pinellas County, Florida. O.J. Simpson. No. Who? Jeff Foxworthy. No. Tell me. Hulk Hogan. Whoa, oh, Hulk. And is this the infamous house where he, he made the sex tape boning his buddy's wife? I can neither confirm nor deny. Because I don't, because I don't know. However, what a what a what a life arc Hulk yeah, had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, you point out Hulk Hogan's house, then we do a little bit longer. Okay. Uh, go about. We usually stop on an island and like let them walk around this island and like. What would always happen is this. Do you swab the poop deck at some point here? I didn't have to swab the poop deck now. Okay. What would always happen is this. Kids would always find a sand dollar, go, oh, a sand dollar, I love these. They try to walk back on the boat with it, mm-hmm. and I go, hey. We're going to have to have you put that back in the water because that's a living creature that you're currently killing by trying to bring it on yeah, a boat Yeah, hey, kid, you. you're committing murder right now. You're killing a sand dollar. People need to know this. This is huge. This is big Florida knowledge right here. Yeah. I don't own Florida a lot, but we do have a very good grasp of the ocean and, and courtesy around the seas. You cannot pick up a sand dollar that is furry and clearly alive and take it out of the water. The ones that are fossilized and clearly look like a rock, yeah, who take that? It's a stone at this point. Don't take out a furry living sand dollar. And you wouldn't do that to a starfish. Don't do it to a sand dollar. Yeah, we do it to every other fucking thing, though. We're plucking dogs out of the woods and making them pets. We got horses fenced up and shit. It's a goddamn nightmare out here. Why should the sand dollar be any fucking different? Maybe we should do the sand The sand dollar's got to be our next animal of the week. 100%. But anyways, we're talking about Anything what's it called? Anything furry that you pull out of the ocean that's got fucking green shit growing on it is still the fuck alive, kid. Put it down and go back to fingering your ass in the sand, you horse's ass. I didn't see a kid ever fingering his ass in the sand. Stop dollar. killing the sand dollars. But the sand dollars not our animal of the week. It's the spotted sea hare. Also the conch shell. Respect it. Back to the spotted sea, sea hare. hare. So part of this cruise... Because this was a research aquarium, we had a very rare permit to pull a trawling net through the water. A trawling net, for for those of you who don't know, is literally a huge net. You tow behind the boat and you catch every single thing in your path. They're illegal for commercial fishermen to do uh, because, well, they're not illegal for like shrimp and shrimp farming and whatever. But for like, you can't just do it. In the middle of the intracoastal, unless you have a permit to do that. Can you imagine if you and me are just, like, fucking in here doing our jobs right now and some aliens came through and just, like, swept us up in a net and we're like, look, kids. And then, like, one kid grabbed you, one alien kid. He's just, like, fucking running down the alien beach with you in his hand as you die because you can't breathe the alien air. And and then I'm in another alien kid's hand. And that's that's life. And then yeah. some fucking alien Jared has to explain to these two alien kids, hey, put 
put human Ross and human Jared down. They're both suffocating because they can't breathe the air. Yeah, so we pull this net, and the reason why we could do it is because we were doing a tally. Like, oh, here's how many of these we found. Here's how many conks we found. Here's how many. Uh, I don't, we never found a stingray, luckily. That would have hurt. Uh, here's how many. Yeah, they need these counts. Sea urchins we found. They need, Desperately. Yeah, they, well, they do the counts for, for wildlife research and whatever. Sure, yeah, y'all were turning these into fucking Jared is counting shit on the poop deck and then turning it into the National Wildlife Association for Florida Conservation. Yes. And but... they're using these numbers to somehow tally, like, you know, how concerned they should be about kids murdering all the sea dollars. Well, anyways, what happens is this. We pull in the net, which a lot of times I almost like killed myself. And there's a body in there like one out of three times because you're in Florida. <laughs> yes. Never found a body, luckily. So we pull it in, we tally everything up, we stick everything in these little aquariums, and we, ever, we hand them around to people. We let them know the ones they can and can't touch, obviously. Like you can't just touch all the stuff. So my favorite one to ever hand out to people was the spotted sea hare for one specific reason. Ross, the spotted sea hare, when you put it in the little container, it was kind of just chilling there. Uh -huh. They shoot out the most vibrant purple ink you've ever seen in your entire life. Wow. So we get to, you get to hand it to these kids, and the yeah. kids are like, it's gross, mom, it looks like a turd. And, and then, then you go, goes, <laughs> watch this shit, and it goes, boink, and just shoots out purple ink. The sad right. part of the story is that that octopus, I mean that spotted sea hare, which is a species of large sea slug, a uh, marine octopus. Opus the branch gastropod is freaking the fuck out because it thinks it's going to die. So it shits purple ink everywhere in an effort to escape. But there is no escape because it's in a jar that a child is shaking. Yeah, uh, it's a bit of a weird practice. Like it goes, oh, let's let's do the trawl net, do scientific auditing of the seas. And then it goes, all right, let's show all this to shit brained tourists. Yeah. But you are you are teaching them everything. The the, the tour guide is teaching them educational. For example, at the expense of this one spotted sea hare's ass. But now I know that a kid who sees that thing in the wild is not going to pull it up, stick it in his pants, and walk into his Fuck condo it. with it. He's going to leave it because he knows. Oh, that's the cool thing I learned about the shoots out purple ink. And we don't, they're not. We're not letting Dude, him. Or he's going to go. That's the thing that shoots out purple ink. Grab it and stick it in his pants and go back to his condo with it because yeah. you showed him how cool it is. I mean. You're a murderer I'm is what I'm saying. I'm not a murderer. I, I saved a lot of these animals. You're a spotted sea hare I, I slaughterer. Pulled these, I pulled these animals out of the water, out of their safety of the water, counted them. Gave them to children. Gave them to children. And counted them. And, and then I threw, turned them, in the counts. threw them back. You threw them back, scarred forever, traumatized, having to go to fucking spotted sea hare PTSD therapy, electroshock therapy just to get rid of the memories. You can't electroshock a sea creature. <laughs> 20 years later, the spotted sea hare is still living in the fear yeah. of the being swept up in another one of these damn nets. <laughs> it's getting dark. Yeah. Anyways, really cool animal. Good for the kids, though. You know, it's for the kids. It's educational. Okay. Yeah, and there's also, look, okay, I don't know how much suffering a spotted sea hare can do, okay? I don't know how much brain activity is going on there. It's like the it's like it's like when I step on an ant by accident. I, I don't go, oh no, I ruined Greg yeah. the ant's whole family. For all we know, Ross, the spotted sea hare uh, takes pleasure out of shooting out its ink. Sort of like yeah, for an, all we know, like it's jism. Except that we probably do know, and I think it's only occurs during like a you know some kind of disaster or whatever. But I do this like it's like the you know I apply feelings to shit that don't even have feelings. Yeah, and 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 it's a problem. There's like three pens in a jar, and I'm picking a pen, and I'm like, oh fuck, because I I know the other two pens are gonna feel bad, the one I don't, the ones I don't pick. So, I take issue with the children shaking the spotted sea hare. Do you have any other cool facts to read about the spotted sea hare? Oh, no. So one thing I read on that Wikipedia page is that it has toxins in its skin, which is weird that they would let me handle them. Didn't tell me that. Why didn't they tell you that? So yeah, it says, like the octopus, it squirts purple ink when disturbed. The ink is an irritant that causes altered behavior in other invertebrates and fish, and its leathery skin contains toxins, which make it practically inedible to most predators. So you can't eat it because of the toxins. You can't eat it, but you can eat it. I would just fucking throw them so far off the boat, dude. Just fucking just, uh, see if you could skip it yeah. across the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was very gentle with them. I put them back in the water, just so it's on record. They crawl around, by the way. They crawl by lifting the front end of their foot and stretching it forward, then placing it on the ground in front, and then creating an arching pattern and doing this over and over like a slug. They're sea slugs. It's, yeah, it's essentially a sea slug. We also would find sea cucumbers, which, fun segue, Ross. Hmm. Did you know that a cucumber and a zucchini are the exact same thing? Yes. Why is, why is there different labeling? I don't know. I think it's marketing. Just a stylistic marketing. 
It'd be like if you and me were selling a podcast and then we were like, well, let's also call it a radio on demand radio is radio boom for. and then we and then we sell we sell podcasts and radio booms but those are the same fucking thing the reason why is because the cucumber companies want you to buy a cucumber and a zucchini and the zucchini companies want you to buy a zucchini and a cucumber they want you to be able to buy both so they market them differently by giving them different names when they're actually the exact same thing huh wait Okay, it says a, a zucchini has a wooden stem at one end and sometimes a flower at the other. Are you sure they're not the same? I just trolled I, your you ass. Sh- I just fucking trolled your ass, Ross. What'd you troll me with? They're not the same fucking thing, you dumbass. Why? Why are you trolling me about vegetables? Because I knew I could. Because I knew I could. Did you mix up vegetables and now you're trying to say you trolled me? Nope. You can very clearly see in the video evidence that uh, I was looking at the camera waiting for you to realize what was happening. So your assumption being that I know in my head what the difference between a cucumber and a zucchini is. This entire conversation, just for fun for you. Yeah. No, I, I when I was driving up here, I went, you know what? I bet you I could convince Ross that a cucumber and a zucchini Like, you thing. segued to this. Yeah, that's how you know I planned it. But for Why? Is a lesson to me? Is this your lesson? To, to teach me the difference between a cucumber and a zucchini today? I also think it would be good social content, to be honest. I'm going to make a video out of it. Oh, my God. At your expense, of course. Our producer, Mike, is just laughing his ass off outside the... I, I just... I just... I'm not a vegetable guy. I don't even get it. Like... It'd be like if I tried to... Pr- if you tried to prank me about two different types of disc golf frisbee, I'd be like, I don't fucking know, Jared. My favorite part of this is that... Right when I said they're the same thing, you instantly agreed with me. There was no hesitation. There was no doubt. Yeah, I had faith in you. It'll never happen again. I trusted you as a co-host and friend and confidant. And now I see what I'm dealing with, which is a monster on the likes of Bernie Madoff. Frankly, also uh, a spotted sea hair terrorist, which I wasn't aware of before today's show. (laughs) But that's neither here nor there. Happy belated birthday to Peter Patlakis. And thank you all for being here with us today. We hope you enjoyed the show. And remember, Jared and I will be back on Friday. Well, I'll be back. I don't know about Jared now. Well, Every I Friday, will be back. you get an ad for you. You might have to go for co-host number five. An exclusive <laughs> edition of RBP every Friday on patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast. <laughs> Monday and Wednesday, we're right here on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and YouTube to talk about different vegetables and, and, and determine their differences. And it's sometimes even just troll each other uh, for, for several minutes at a time with really no purpose. But every Friday on patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast, we talk about the facts, Jared, and the facts only. Yeah, we're, they call us the Goldwater of Patreon. Yeah, we really get into deep investigative journalism and discuss things that, that are really life-changing. We can't say much more than that here because it would be giving away life-changing uh, investment strategy for free. Again, you should not be investing in Ponzi schemes. You should be investing all of your money and patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast. That's my personal opinion. I am not in any way a financial strategist. Well, I do have a Ponzu scheme that I'd like to interest some people in, but we'll talk about that on Patreon. You and food. It's really a thing you get horny for. It's kind of my background. I've worked at a cookware company. It's true. We need your support so that we can buy Jared more cu- cucumbers and zucchinis. Cukes, as we call them, and zooks. Cukes and zooks. So go to patreon.com slash Ross Bolin podcast today. And as you'll see on there, if one day we get to 2,000 supporters on patreon.com slash Ross Bolin podcast, we might get health insurance. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I think it says we'll start looking into it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you could start looking into it well, now. Here's the point. I know when we have 2,000 patrons that when I look into it, I won't be as upset as I am if we do it now. Oh, yeah. So true. we need you on patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast. Thank y'all. Seriously, hope you enjoyed today's episode. Tell people about the show. Share RBP with somebody this weekend. Come get your third episode on patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast on Friday. They're ad free on Patreon. They're much more unhinged, which is seemingly impossible, I know, but I assure you, they're even more unhinged. Remember, you are not alone. Deuce chunk. Stay back. <laughs>